This is Known Podcast, hosted by Dustin Bennett, the lead pastor of Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Known Podcast is dedicated to helping you grow closer to Jesus, unleashing the power of your creativity, and developing you as a leader. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Known Podcast, welcome back. So excited again for a new episode. And, you know, I'm the pastor at Known Victory Church in Edmonton, uh, Canada. And at our church, Known Victory Church, we have seven things that we use to guide our culture. You know, some businesses or churches might, will call these, you know, core values or, or tenets, you know, of who they are. But we like to call them, we like to call them our culture guide, the things that kind of guide our culture, guide our future, help us make decisions, lead us into, you know, what we believe God has called us to do. And we have seven things that, 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 that we're about here at our church. And, you know, number one is Jesus is our purpose. You know, number two is people are our heartbeat. Number three is serving is our honor. Number four is leadership is our call. And five is connection is our passion. Six, generosity is our nature. And seven, excellence is our mindset. And, you know, I, I'm excited uh, about these things. You know, these are some things that I'm that are passionate about that hold a special place in my heart. They're the things that we talk about on a regular basis here, you know, at our church. And I think these, these things help me realize the point of what I do, then make sure that I'm using my position, using my title to do the right things. And today's episode, I want to talk about one of these things that I think is so important for all of us, no matter our position as leaders, no matter our title, no matter what it is, that this is so key to human connection. This is so key to being good leaders, to using our title, uh, in the right way, so important, and it is this: serving is our honor. You know, I'm passionate about serving because I think it's so important that we don't serve out of obligation, but we serve because it's an opportunity to love somebody. We serve as an opportunity to to create deeper connection. We serve to help meet the needs of the people around us. That's what serving does in our lives. That it's an honor that we get to serve. It's not just an obligation, it's an honor that we get to serve. It's not, we don't have to, we get to, right? And serving is our honor. And, you know, recently, you know, in, in Canada, we, 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 we had a day called Remembrance Day. You know, this is a day dedicated to remembering the sacrifice and, and remembering the bravery shown by our Canadian military over the years in the wars that we've been a part of, celebrating and remembering the lives lost for our freedom that we have in our country. We, what we do in this day is we honor the lives that are lost. We, 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 we honor those who served our country. We celebrate the victories that allow us to live you know, in this beautiful country. And in the military, serving and honor are two key words that are used. Two key words that are used. And people who served our country through the military are honored as heroes. Those who gave their lives to service for our country, who, who serving was their honor. You know, I was, I was, you know, preparing, you know, for, for, for the podcast this week. Uh, I did some research on military, something I, I love. My grandfather served in the military, uh, you know, and they, they, they have all these incredible stories. Uh, but I was doing some research on the First World War when it came to voluntary uh, service or conscription where they were ma- mandatory to serve, right? I was looking at when did Canada have voluntary? When was it mandatory? And, so I did some research. I'm just going to read my research here to you today. And I think it's so fascinating when it comes to serving. And in the first few months of the First World War, Canada relied on a voluntary recruitment. You know, Canadians rushed to enlist for reasons of patriotism, adventurism, opposition uh, to the German aggression or personal ties to Great Britain. And it's so cool because over 300,000 Canadians saw the need to fight and signed up immediately. As soon as there's a call, boom, we're going. We're volunteering. We're going to go fight and we're going to go serve our country. And these numbers were extremely high. Why? Because at the time, Canada had only about 8 million people. So 300,000 of 8 million, that's a lot of people who gave their lives, you know, to service uh, right away. And But it's interesting because as the stories came in and the casualty lists grew, Canadians realized the cost of this war, that it wouldn't be short and by no means would it be easy. And eventually the lineups to enlist got shorter and shorter. Shorter and shorter, less and less people trying to sign up to volunteer for service. You know, the reality was, is that this war wasn't ending and more people were needed. And so what happened is military propaganda grew and the rules for joining the military became smaller and smaller, shorter and shorter, where they were taking almost anybody to come and serve. And on August 29th, 1917, after a lot of discussion, after a lot of conflict, really, 
especially between the English and French here in Canada, uh, the, 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 the Prime Minister... Uh, uh, on August 29, 1917, said that all male citizens aged 20 to 45 were subject to a call-up for military service through the end of the war, right? So if you're between 20 and 45 and you're a man, you have to conscribe, you have to come, you're going to be serving in this war. And what's interesting is that thousands of young men refused to even register for the selection process. Of those that did register, 93% asked for exemptions, 93%. And call-ups began in January 1918, and in total, 401,888 men registered for conscription. And 124, 588 were drafted to the Canadian force. And of those, 99,651 were taken on strength, while the rest were found unfit for service or discharged. In total, 47,509 conscripted men were sent overseas. Almost 50,000 men. And these statistics, I was researching this when it came to serving, it's fascinating because it really shows the difference between serving out of obligation and serving out of desire. Serving because you want to or serving because you have to. Serving because you get to or serving because you have to. There's a big difference. And I'm not saying that the men who chose not to fight, the, the men who got the exemptions, I'm not saying uh, that they were cowards. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that there's a big difference between being forced to serve, right? If you are 20 to 45, you have to go. And 300,000 people saying, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this without being asked or made to do it. The number is 300,000 all the way down to 47,000, right? Right at the beginning, 47,000 men. It's a big difference when it comes to the numbers. And, you know, for me, I, when, when I read stories, when I see history, I like to put myself in that position. What would I have done if we were going to war and voluntary recruitment? Would I have been one of the first 300,000 people to go and say, I'm going to go fight? Would I have been one of the first 300,000 people to say, you know what? I'm willing to sacrifice everything. I'm willing to sacrifice my family. I'm willing to sacrifice my life in order to fight for my country. Would I have been one of those men? Now, would I have been one of the ones who, who, who waited until it was mandatory? Then I would have said, okay, yeah, I'll sign up, I'll conscribe, and then I'm going to go fight. Would I have just said, oh, I'm going to wait until I have to go? Would I have been one of the ones who tried to find an exemption to not go? Would I have been one of those men? Would I have been one of those who, 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 who decided I, didn't, I don't want to do this? Would I have been one who just said, I'm going to go? Like, like, these are the questions I ask myself. Because I think it's easy for us to look back in history and say, you know what I would have done? I would have been a hero, right? I wouldn't, like, we look back. But when we put ourselves in the situation, I look at myself and say, I honestly don't know what I would do. Would I have been willing to sacrifice everything? Would I have been willing to, to go immediately? I, I honestly don't know. But this, this got me thinking about serving. And it came, got me thinking about how serving is our honor. As I was thinking about that, you know, this week and today, serving is our honor. In my opinion, maybe you disagree with me. But in my opinion, the greatest leader to ever grace this earth is Jesus, in my opinion. This is the man who changed my life. This is the man who changed the course of human history. This is the man I've dedicated my life to following. I've dedicated my entire life to. The man who changed this planet, right? The man who, who changed this planet. Whether you believe he was the son of God or not, when you look back at history, the impact that Jesus had on our earth is extraordinary. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. The fact that there's millions of people following him today. We started with 12 millions of people following him today. And the things that have been created out of this life of Jesus from hospitals and art and so many things came from this life of Jesus. And this is what he said about himself. And I think for all of us as leaders, no matter your position, no matter your title, no matter who you are, no matter what you do when it comes to serving, I believe that this is a call for all of us when it comes to leadership. And it's in Mark 10, verse 43 to 45, and this is what it says. But it shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man, this is Jesus, right? He's talking about himself. Even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve 
and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came to serve us. That was his mission, to serve us and to give his life for us, to, to sacrifice everything so that we could be free, so that we could have a relationship. He came and gave it all. And I think for all of us as leaders, this is our responsibility as well, that we are here to serve the people around us, the people that God has entrusted to you, you serve. And I think that's the greatest trait of a leader is one who has dedicated their life to serving the people around them. The greatest trait. That it's not about what I can get from you. It's about what I can give to you. That serving people is so key to leadership. No matter your position, no matter your title, whether it's father, whether it's CEO, whatever it is, you, your responsibility is to serve the people entrusted to you. And maybe in your life, you have somebody who, who in your life would take a bullet for you. Maybe you've seen the movies where, you know, someone's, you know, in a, in a shootout and, and someone dives in front of the bullet, right, like slow motion, and they take the bullet and they're a hero for saving somebody else's life. I think for some of us, we look around, we might not see a lot of people willing to die for us, willing to jump in front of a bullet for us. We might not see a lot of people willing to do this in our life, but that's what Jesus did, right? He, he took the bullet for us. He, he, he went to the cross. He died for us to serve us. And that's the greatest responsibility of a leader is to serve, not to be served. And serving is our honor. It's an honor that we get called to serve. And I'm so honored that God chose me. I'm so honored that God uses me to serve his people. I'm so honored that when I took the title of follower of Jesus, I also took the responsibility of a servant to all to serve those people around me. That's the greatest call of a leader. You know, and, and we look around us, you know, Jesus served. That's, that was his thing. He served people. He served everyone. That's what he did. He was a server. Where Jesus goes, I go, right? When I, when I, when I took this responsibility... Where Jesus goes, I go. Where he leads, I lead. When Jesus said, what Jesus says, I say. Jesus was always searching for places to read. You read through the stories, whether from the Bible or not, the stories of Jesus are all about him serving. He served by providing, right, meals, resources. He, he, he served by healing. He served by loving. He served by forgiving. He served by saving. He served by bringing joy and bringing peace. Jesus was always on the lookout for opportunities to serve. Jesus led by serving people. That's how he led, by serving and loving people around him. And our, our world is filled with need. And I think you we've all seen this. Our world is filled with need. We can't turn on the news for, for more than five seconds when we see the need. We can't go on Facebook or Instagram before we see the need in our world. People need something. It might be food. It might be clothing, it might be a friend, it might be a father, it might be a mother, it might be a place to call home, it might be a place to belong, it might be Christmas gifts for their kids. There's a lot of need in our world and as leaders, we have to become seekers of need. We have to become seekers of it. We have to look for the need and bring a solution, right? Serving is finding a need, bringing a solution. Finding a need, fixing the problem. That's what our responsibility is as leaders, as servers, is to go look for needs. Do you know the needs in your family? Do you know what your children need? Do you know what your spouse needs? Do you know what your coworkers need? Do you know what your pastor needs? Do you know what your church needs? Do you know? And if we don't know, it's time for us to start asking that question. What do you need? What is it that I can give you? What is it that you need? We need to start asking these questions. What are the people around you facing right now that you might be able to help them with? We need to understand, I think, when it comes to serving, we have to understand the difference between ignorance and apathy. We have to understand the difference between ignorance and apathy. You know, ignorance is not knowing there is a problem, right? We look around, we're blind to it. We just don't see the problem. But apathy is knowing the problem. But one of two things happens. We don't care or we don't even try. 
we can't be bothered, right? That's, that's what apathy is. We, we know the problem, we see it, but we don't do anything about it. Are you ignorant of the needs around you? Or are you apathetic towards them? These are questions we have to ask. Do I even see it? And if you do see it, are you doing anything about it? I think when it comes to serving, we serve oftentimes out of a place of, of apathy. We serve out of a place of saying, I just don't care. And what, what, what happens is ignorance is not seeing the needs so you don't do anything about them, right? Maybe you don't see them. Maybe you don't realize how big the needs are. But it's time to start asking the questions. It's time to start seeking the needs, understanding the need, and making an impact. That's what serving does, and that's what serving is. And apathy is seeing the needs and doing nothing about it, right? I think when our eyes are open to the realities of people and when, when the realities of the people around us, when our eyes are open to those realities, we have the responsibility as leaders in whatever title we have to do something about it, to do something about the need that we see. We serve people by knowing what they need and having the resources to meet that need. You might not have the answer. But you should always know somebody who does. The greatest leaders are resource leaders. We might not have the answer. We may not have the resource. But I know somebody who does. I believe our role as leaders is to seek out the needs around us and meet those needs. You will only be ignorant for so long, right? Eventually, your eyes are going to be open. Eventually, you're going to see the need. Eventually, it's going to happen, right? You're eventually going to see it. You will only be Uh, ignorant for so long. Once we see it, we are no longer ignorant. We are either apathetic or people of action. We either don't do anything about it or we bring a solution. Ignorance, you can never, you can only use ignorance as an excuse for so long because as soon as your eyes are open, you're either going to be apathetic or person of action, one or the other. And people of action, it might not be you meeting the need, it might be finding somebody who can meet that need. And I think apathy often comes from one of two things and we often serve out of these two places. Apathy comes from arrogance or insecurity. And I think all of us, again, we serve out of one of these areas every once in a while. Maybe this is even our motivation for serving. But arrogance says, this is what arrogance says. Arrogance says, I don't want to do it. You know, arrogant servers are full of excuses. And maybe you've heard these excuses before. Maybe you've used these excuses before like I have, right? I don't have time. I can't be bothered. Somebody else will do it. My status is too high. Give this job to somebody else. I couldn't be seen with that person. What would people think? What would people say if they saw me with somebody like that? I'm not going to do anything because they deserve this. It, they brought this upon themselves and they created this problem. They created this need. I'm not going to meet the need because then they're not going to learn their lesson. They're not going to learn their lesson, so I'm not going to do anything about it. That's what arrogant leaders say. Arrogant servers say, arrogance only lets us serve people who will give us something in return. The only way we're going to serve is if people are watching or if, 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 you're gonna, if I'm going to get something from you because I serve, if I'm going to get the promotion, if I'm going to get the, whatever. That's what arrogant serving is. Are people watching? And what am I going to get out of this? That's the questions we're asking. And, you know, insecurity, insecure servers, insecurity says, I can't do it. You know, again, arrogance says, I don't want to do it. Insecurity says, I can't do it. Insecure servers are always overthinking. Maybe this is you. I don't have the expertise. I don't have the money. You know, it says, if I give, I won't have enough. Even if I had the resources, what if I fail? That'd be horrible. I'd be so embarrassed. What what if people saw me fail? I'm not going to, I can't even try. You know, insecurity tells us, when we're serving that, it's easier to not try than it is to fail. We feel failure is the most biggest form of humiliation. And so we're scared to fail so we don't even try. People need us to start trying. Insecurity only lets us serve people when it's cheap. When the cost of serving is low, it's not going to cost much. I know I can accomplish it. It's not even hard. Like I can just do this easy That's what insecure serving is. We're only going to serve people when it doesn't cost us anything. And we can't serve out of arrogance. We can't serve out of insecurity because our minds are always on us, right? When we're serving out of arrogance, it's like, I'm too good. I I have too much. 
and insecurity says I don't have enough, so I can't give because I'm I'm gonna be fall short myself. When we're when we're arrogant or insecure, our minds are always on us, either on our lack or on our status. Right? I can't do this because we are filled with excuses. Arrogant and insecure leaders, arrogant and insecure servers are constantly thinking about themselves more than other people. They're constantly thinking about what I can get from you rather than what I can give to you. We have to shift our focus. We have to shift our minds from arrogance and insecurity, as hard as it is, to humility and unity. Humility says, I am going to do it. I am going to do it. No matter what it takes, even if it costs me something, we shift our minds from ourselves to, to others, from what we have to what they need. Humble servers see the need and do it quietly. Right? Arrogant leaders, they, they are servers, arrogant leaders, arrogant servers, they try and make sure people are watching. So humble leaders say, it doesn't matter. I'm going to serve even if I don't get a reward, even if no one's watching, even if no one sees, I'm going to serve. That's what hum humble servers, humble leaders do. They don't need the spotlight. They don't need the attention. They see it, the need. They see it and do whatever it takes to find a solution. And also humility, though. Humility says, I know what I'm capable of, and I know what I'm not capable of. For me, I'm good in many areas. There's a lot of things I'm gifted in, a lot of talents that I have. And some of the things, you know, I can help people move in and out of homes. You know, that's not that hard for me. I can go and I can help you, you know, move. I can, I can go and I can bring groceries to your home. I can maybe cook a meal for you. I, I can be someone to talk to. I can be someone to pray with you. I can help you create you know digital content for your business or or or, or your church like I, I can do these things but I, there's also things that i'm not capable of and one of those things is construction you might call me in I'll, I'll take a wall out you know i'll take things to a garbage bin i'll sweep i'll mop i'll, I'll vacuum but you do not want me putting anything up because it's not going to be secure it's going to be hung not it's not going to be hung straight there's gonna be a lot of things that i do that are just not good and recently we had a lady in our church who, who got a new home and she was asking some of us to come help her move and help her with some, you know, s some cleaning, help her, you know, do some minor, you know, renovations. And I said, yeah, I'll come, but you do not want me painting. I'm telling you right now, you do not want me painting. Why? Because first of all, I'm not good at it. Number two, you're going to have to redo it. And then number three, it's going to cost you more, right? And so I know my, what I'm capable of as a, as a humble leader. I know, okay, I know what I'm capable of. I'm also very aware of my things that I'm not good in. There are things that I cannot do. You know, arrogant leaders, arrogant servants, they say, I'll, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to do it. You know, I, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. But you're not capable of some things. I think all of us, we have limit limitations on what we're capable of. You know, the things that maybe we're just not gifted in, the things that you're trying to do and you just can't accomplish. Humility says, I know what I'm capable of. Humility allows us to have a clear understanding of who we are and not trying to be something we aren't. We serve out of humility by being willing to serve and to be realistic about what we can actually do. That's what humility says. Humility says, I am going to do it no matter what it costs. And then unity, we switch from, switch from you know, arrogance and insecurity to humility and unity. Unity says, we can do it together. Unity says, I can go farther with other people. We can serve broader and bigger and farther together. We can serve longer together. That's what unity does. It says, I might not have the time, I might not have the expertise, but I, but I know someone who does. I might not have the resource, I might not have the money, but I know somebody who can help meet this need. We become stronger when we are unified because we all have something to add to the table. We all have gifts. We all have strengths. We all have things that we can come together and build this circle of serving. We serve longer, farther together than we do apart. Because you aren't talented in every area. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. You're not. There's things you cannot do. There's things that you are incapable of, but there's things that you are so good at. There's things that you're good at way better than I can do. There's things that you're so gifted in, but we have to realize that we can't do it all. You're not a superhero, you know? You, you, you can't do it by yourself. We all need a team around us who are different than us to help us serve better. We can serve better together than we can alone. You might not have the body to shovel your neighbor's sidewalk while they're in the hospital, 
But you might know maybe you're one of your kids or one of the neighbors say, hey, you know, this person there in the hospital, can, we, can you just shovel their stuff for them? Maybe I'll pay for it. Maybe you don't have the expertise to cook a good meal for someone who just had a baby. You say, you know what? I'm going to buy you groceries. Please cook a meal for them. I'm not good at cooking, but here, I bought the groceries. Please cook a meal. They're, they just had a baby. They're in need. You know, we know we can get around people who are different than us. That's what unified servers do is saying, I'm going to see the need and then I'm going to find somebody to fix it. I'm going to find someone to meet the need. I'm going to find somebody with expertise in that area. You might not be skilled in construction, but you might know someone who can patch drywall in a single mom's home. You might not have the ability to, to, to do some of these things, but find people the greatest leaders, the greatest servers are a resource where they know people who can meet the needs of the people around them. This is the beauty of community. The beauty of community. The community is imperfect people, which we all are, coming together to serve each other in the areas that we need most. To serve one another. To serve out of honor, not obligation. Serve because we love each other. You know, you might feel insecure about serving alone, which I think a lot of us do. But it's because maybe you're, you're serving in an area that you're not gifted in. Maybe you're serving in an area that, that, that you're just not as confident in, and so you become insecure. But find people who are confident in that area and help get them on your team to serve in that area. To find people who are gifted differently than you. Unified leaders, unified servers are so well-resourced that we might not be the one to meet the need. We might see it. And then we find people to resource it, to find people to meet it. It's so beautiful. That's the beauty of community. and Because we can walk together in more boldness. We can walk together knowing, you know what, there's a lot of need. Yeah, it might feel like you look the need. There's a high need. You might look at the need in your family or in your business or in your church or whatever. That's so big, like, I can't make an impact by myself. You probably can't. But together, we can make an impact that, that goes farther than we could ever think or imagine. And You know, serving, it shifts from obligation to opportunity, from obligation to honor. When we realize that arrogance and insecurity will try and persuade us to stop serving, they will cause us to think internally rather than externally. They are filled with powerful excuses and filled with constant overthinking as to why we can't serve. But humility and unity tear apart these excuses and cause us to stop overthinking and start acting. Stop being apathetic and start being people of action. Humility moves us to make a difference even if no one else is watching. And unity pushes, out, pushes us out of the comfort of isolation to the beauty of community. This is where serving becomes an honor. When we shift from arrogance and insecurity to humility and unity. We need to really take a look at ourselves and ask the question, am I serving out of arrogance? Do I only serve when I'm going to get something out of it? Am I only serving when people are watching? Am I only willing to you know, do the job that no one wants to do when people are actually seeing it? Or am I willing to do it even if no one else notices? Am I serving out of insecurity? Am I serving in a place where if it's cheap, I'll do it? If the cost is low, I'm going to do it. If it's going to be really cheap for me, it's not going to cost a lot of my time or my money, yes, I'll go serve in that area. But if it's going to be exhausting for me, if it's going to take effort, I'm not willing to do it because I don't think I'm willing, I'm capable I'm going to tell you, you are capable to do more than you think, especially when we shift to unity. Together, we can go farther. Together, we can conquer more. Together, we can do more. Shift our focus from, from arrogance and insecurity to humility and unity. These will change the way that we serve. These will change our minds. These will change our organizations. These will change our families. These have the ability to change our, our churches and our businesses, these have the ability to do this if we start serving. And what serving really is, if you go to the bottom line of it, is seeing a need, stop being ignorant of the need, find the need, and then make a choice to not be apathetic, but to be a person of action when it comes to the need. People who are servers bring love. People who are servers bring joy wherever they go. And if you go back to that verse, 
Jesus, where he talks about himself, Mark 10, verse 45, for even the Son of Man, even Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Let us grow in our serving. Let us not serve out of obligation, but out of honor. And let us realize our service is a gift to the people around us. And I believe that you can do this, and I believe that we can do this together. Thank you for joining us today for The Known Podcast. We have new content coming out every Wednesday, so make sure to come back next week for a new episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Known Podcast and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. See you next week.